for the domain yes and to be completely fair I'm the one who caused this terrible mess in the first place oh what happened did Vima miss something hello you two Lessig was just telling us what happened perhaps you should allow me to explain <clears throat> I'm afraid it was I who caused all this trouble in the domain it was Lessig. To be precise, I saw a most exquisite water orb at the entrance of the domain. It reminded me of an astrolabe my grandfather gave me when I was seven years old. I was curious if it could rotate, so I reached out and touched it. Little did I know that it was the core of this entire domain. <clears throat> what I mean to say is... I knew something was wrong as soon as the whole place started flipping. It's not just your fault. I failed in my responsibilities as the caretaker here. Oh, I knew I should have put the core somewhere more secure. Oh, you mean the big ball of water at the entrance? Yes, that's the one. Anyway, after giving it some thought, Lessig has offered to perform some more repairs and maintenance to help support the domain. But we were concerned he wouldn't be able to handle it all alone, so Eula and I will also stay here to lend him a hand. But don't be mistaken. I'm not doing this out of the kindness of my heart like Kale. My job is purely to monitor and ensure that Lessig doesn't cause any more trouble here. Oh! Sure. <laughs> I don't think anyone's buying that anymore, Eula. Though I do remember that Amber mentioned we should just nod and agree when you act like this. <clears throat> uh, right. Uh, you better not slack off today, Lessig. Ah, uh, no. I I'll get right to work. <laughs> Either way. Lessig is going to be in charge of making lunch for everyone today. Hmm? Ah, yes. I'll try, but uh, I'm not sure if my skills will prove satisfactory. What was that? No, I mean... Thanks, everyone, for giving me a chance to redeem myself. I can already feel new strength kindled inside me! Ha ha ha! Ah... No, maybe that's just the heat of the oven. Very good. Uh, but you should conserve your strength. Many parts of the domain are still in disrepair, so we have a lot to investigate. Seems Adia has a little more pep in her step after finding others to help do the work. Now that you three are situated, we can focus on what the rest of us will be doing today. I'll go gather the others. We should get ready to leave as soon as possible. And there she goes. At least she seems to be happy. Maybe this is how it feels to be in charge. Hmm. 
There have been many poorly written applications lately. I guess I'll just have to reject them all. Retrieve the last missing component. My working theory is that the director listed on the sign has it. Ah, uh, no detail slips by our general. Uh, what's a director? The director is a kind of job. The one we're looking for is named Zosimo. Zosimo is responsible for managing everything that happens on the stage. Similar to how Akia is responsible for managing the whole world. Whoa! Sounds like Miss Akia must be way busier! You'd think so, wouldn't you? Care to comment on that at all, Idea? Ah, uh, maybe someone else can explain. I'm just enjoying taking it easy, as usual. doesn't get out much. He's almost always cooped up in his treehouse making props or writing scripts. But I'm trying to remember now. Where is that treehouse of his? Huh? You don't remember? Hey, don't forget! I'm just the mascot. <laughs> I believe it's that way. Though he might prefer to be alone, given he often has to move stage props, I suspect that he lives near the theater. And having a view of the entire stage would be useful when imagining a production's actual stage flow. So if I were him, I'd probably pick a treehouse over there. But how do you know which direction the theater is in? Ah, uh, simple. The overall layout and decorations look more exciting in that direction. Oh, good point! <laughs> Why didn't I think of that?
Uh, where did that blasted automation mechanism go? Huh? The male actor standees are here, but where are the female ones? Hmm? Uh, uh, who's that? Idea? Yes, Sosimos! Tis I, Idea! How's that for a dramatic entrance? This is a surprise. I was sure you'd be... Curled up in a fetal position, crying to yourself? Wow, what a fascinating little creature. Did you just read my mind? The name's Paimon? And uh, no, Paimon's no mind reader. Just call it an educated guess. <laughs> it seems everyone shares a similar opinion about you, Idea. I knew from the start that a managerial role wasn't for me. But I found my true calling now, as a mascot! Mascot? Is that a new role? I don't remember casting you for that. Okay, enough about me. I'm just here to introduce you to some new friends of mine. And that's why we came to see you. Well... Do you have the component that fell out of the central hub? I do. However... Uh, I'm afraid the incident has caused many malfunctions with the stage mechanisms, and I can no longer put on any performances. Okay, so you're holding the component ransom till we help you fix the mechanisms, huh? No. Till we fix the stage, surely. Uh. I'd have thought he wants us to make some more props, no? Given that some of the standees are missing. Um... Or maybe the component is broken and we need to fix it! You're all forgetting that the majority of his work involves writing scripts. I'll wager that he wants us to edit them. What has gotten into you all? What sort of person do you take me for, hmm? The component is safe and sound. I can give it to you now if you'd like. Although I was hoping that... Maybe you might be willing to... Help rescue my show? You're a big group. I have lots of roles to fill. It would really speed up the casting. A show? <laughs> that sounds fun! I want to help! Can we? Can we? Also, truth be told, I've hit a bit of a roadblock in my script and was just thinking about how to move the story forward. And then you all showed up. Suddenly, I got my muse back. I don't know how to explain it, but something about seeing all of you finally helped me figure out how to continue my script. Huh? You mean that story you've been stuck on forever? Are you serious? You really think you can finish it now? Yes, really. Just give me a little time, and I'll write it all up. In the meantime, I'll leave things to you, Idea. Whoa! And he's off to write the script! Ah, <sighs> Zosimos has always wanted to write an epic story about a thief and a mage. Apparently, he got the idea from some rumors that were swirling around, but he only got as far as writing the intro before writer's block set in. Why don't you all take some time for yourselves, while I see what I can do? We'll reconvene after the director finishes the script. A director, my friends, is a storyteller. And the key ingredient to every good story is inspiration. The moment I laid eyes on General Sangonomiya, Inspiration hit me for a brand new character. The heroine was the missing piece of the puzzle. The rest of the story flowed naturally from there, and now it's finished. So please, take a look through your scripts, and we will tell this story together. Well, is everything clear? Director Zosimos, how do you pronounce this word? Let me see. Ah, that's sojourn. It means to stay for a while. 
This is a very cute moment, so let's make sure that comes through in the performance. Oh, wait! There's another word I don't know here. It's okay, Klee. We can go through your lines together a few more times after this meeting's over. That would be most appreciated, Kaya. I had a feeling about you, actually. You seem to know a thing or two about character acting. Tell me, have you acted before? <laughs> You're too kind. It's all in the script, really. It just rolls off the tongue. Oh, you think so? Well, you definitely have a knack for it. I've actually been looking out for someone with your talent. If I make it as a big-time director, then I can see us working together for the long term. Be sure to stay in touch, okay? You and I are gonna go places. What can I say? Sounds good to me. Great. Fantastic. Uh, now then, please go through your scripts one more time. But don't just read the words. Remember my notes. And really let the character inhabit you. I need to have a look at the stage, so I'll leave you to it. If you need me for anything, I'll be in the big theater right in the center of this area. Wonder what the theaters are like here. Let's go check it out while everyone's still getting ready. Here you go. Where did it go? I put it right here. Hey, Zosimos! What you up to? Oh, it's you two. Please, come here. Feast your eyes on this stage. I designed it myself. Directors have to design the stage, too? <laughs> I'm no ordinary director. I take a more holistic approach. Directing, script writing, stage design, I do it all. Sounds like a lot of work. Idea wouldn't be able to handle that kind of job. Idea has her work cut out for her, too, you know. She's my one and only member of the audience. Though she often criticizes my shows. Well, she just says what she thinks. You don't know how to write, or this is getting ridiculous. 
I think it's because I use preprints in a way that she feels goes against what they're intended for. But even though she's my harshest critic, she's also been my biggest supporter in a lot of ways. I guess you could say she's like my agent. I'm very grateful to her. I've always dreamed of being a director, but I've never had the chance until I came here. So, what did you do before you came here? Like I said, I dreamed. <laughs> From a young age, every time I came home after a show, I'd go over the story again and again in my mind. Growing up, my biggest aspiration was to be a director. Unfortunately, I couldn't offer much beyond my practical skills, so I ended up spending most of my time as a prop designer and doing a bit of set design on the side. Don't get me wrong, I do love building the set, but nothing satisfies me more than putting on my very own show. No wonder you only wrote director on the sign. <laughs> exactly. You're not doing a great job of convincing me that you're not a mind reader. By the way, could I ask you for your help with something? I'm having trouble finding the master script, and I'll need it shortly. The one you only just finished writing? You lost it already? Yeah. After I handed everyone their copies, I held on to my master copy while I was checking on everything around the theater. I must have dropped it somewhere. If it's not here, then it might be in the attic. These are the only two places I've been since I finished writing it. But, ugh, I still have some things to do to get the stage ready. Would you two mind having a look for me? it. Here you go. Pretty new. 
This must be the master script. Let's go give it to Director Zosimos. Zosimos, we got your script. Ah, thank you. That's a huge help. Uh, I'm running out of time here. There's no way I'll be able to fix everything up perfectly. We may just have to wing it. Anyway, the stage is secondary. The performance is what really matters. Things can always go wrong on stage. But as long as the show goes on, it should be fine. You don't sound very confident in what you're saying. It's true. I realize now that a show is the art of the unknown. Even if you have the same actors performing on the same stage, the performance will be slightly different every time. Those subtle differences are what make each performance special. Uh, okay. One last request. Traveler, you can enter the preprints, yes? The truth is that my sets are composed entirely of preprints. First, I use materials to make the objects. Then I take those objects and turn them into the preprint. Now, of course, preprints are really meant for making objects to furnish the domain. So using objects to create preprints is, strictly speaking, the reverse of what this is intended for. But Idea said that if this is what I really want to do, she's not going to stand in my way. Ah, so that's what you meant earlier. Okay, well, what do you need us to do? I'd like the Traveler to go into the preprint set and help move props around during the performance. The reason is... Um... <laughs> uh... <laughs> oh, Paimon gets it now! If you're busy directing, moving the props, and operating all the mechanisms, you never get the chance to watch the show! Yes. I know that I'm no master playwright, but still... Even if it really is a half-baked script, with shoddy writing and moments of sheer ridiculousness, I'd still like to see it for myself. Just once. Hard to turn a guy down after a speech like that. Thank you. Genuinely, I'm so grateful. I'll go and inform the others. Then, as soon as you're ready, the show can begin. The scribe's work is simple, which is exactly why I took the position. Hmm. There have been many poorly written applications lately. I guess I'll just have to reject them all. Wait. Huh? No. Uh, whatever.
Long, long ago, there was a great thief. He lived in a land where the light did not shine, where all suffered in the darkness. Uh, people call me? Sorry, Kaya. Directly into the microphone, please. Otherwise your voice will, you know. Okay. <clears throat> they call me the Dagger Bandit, but no one sees that I rob the rich and give to the poor. Here in the dark, evildoers run rampant in the shadows, while the good, honest folk stumble blindly on, just trying to find a way through. As the bandit brooded, suddenly the world was inexplicably changed as a single star appeared on the horizon and flew across the sky. Traveler, stomp on that movement mechanism in front of you. Light, a brief flash, yet enough to illuminate the world. find the source of that light, I can shine it into the darkness, and the people will suffer in blindness no longer. Without a moment to spare, he set off to follow the star's course. All the while, the star kept moving through the sky. Um, Traveler, the star kept moving through the sky. Looks like I have to go through the desert. This could get dangerous. If everything he'd heard was to be believed, the desert ahead was a no-man's land filled with horrors. Worse still, the star had landed in the most difficult to reach location, surrounded by sheer cliffs. But he was determined to press onward. I've come this far, and I'm not about to turn back now. The Dagger Bandit trekked deep into the desert wasteland. Yet when he finally arrived at his destination, he found not a fallen star, but a young girl, dressed in white. How strange. I'm positive this is where the star landed. Young lady, do you know where the light has gone? The girl replied, Traveler from afar, the light you seek is only a bottled flame. But the flame has now died, and its light is long gone. A uh, bottled flame? Yes, it was a gift from another. And so, the girl began to tell the story of how the bottle came into her possession. The girl hailed from a kingdom that sat atop the waterfalls. But when the reigning dynasty fell and a new one seized power, she and her people fled for their lives. A thick fog began to fill the air as she made her way through the forest, and dense thickets tried to block her path. There is a mechanism down there that you can press to retract the thicket board below the stage. If I only had a lamp to guide me through this wretched forest, then I could survive. With scratches covering her arms and legs, the girl pressed through the pain and made her way forward. The road ahead was arduous, but she was determined to press onward. I've come this far, and I'm not about to turn back now.
But, just as she was drawing near her destination, a huge stretch of thorns and brambles suddenly came into view. Despair set in and began to weigh on her heart. If only someone could help me, I would give anything in return. The girl's heartfelt wish in her moment of desperation did not go unheard. Wait, wait, wait! There's no mechanism for the final thicket! Ugh, I must have forgotten to check those boards. According to the story, those thickets should be gone from the stage now, right? Yes, total oversight on my part. Ugh, what a pain. I can help! Traveler! Catch! Ah, it's a Jumpy Dumpty! The girl's heartfelt wish did not go unheard. For a Jumpy Dumpty, who was passing by, helped to clear a path for her. Thank you, Jumpy Dumpty. And so the girl continued her journey deeper into the forest. But what she found there was not a lamp, but a mage glowing with fire. So just to clarify, it was supposed to be the mage who helped burn a path through the thicket. <laughs> The mage took pity on the girl and handed her a bottle. Then, the mage began to tell the story of how the bottle came into her possession. The fiery mage had an adventurous spirit and enjoyed taking long journeys. On one such journey, while taking rest in an oasis, she found a beautiful bottle by a crescent-shaped lake. Klee, quick, get in the light. She was an extraordinary mage, with the power to grant people their wishes. She turned the bottle into a thing of equally extraordinary power. But the only place that it could make wishes come true was inside of the bottle. Oh me, oh my, look at this wonderful bottle of mine! It could make a fine toy, but better still, a sojourner's home. The fiery mage blew into the bottle, allowing it to grant one single wish outside its glass walls. Oh, am I supposed to blow into it? Wow, it lit up! A flame was kindled within the bottle, and it began to glow a fiery red, just like the mage herself. After the mage finished telling her story, she disappeared, leaving only the bottle behind. A magic bottle that can grant wishes. And I wish to leave this place and go somewhere where no one will ever find me again. And then, the bottle seemed to softly inquire. I don't know. The flame in the bottle faded as the girl's single wish was granted, and she found herself in the middle of the desert, far away, where no one could ever find her. When the Dagger Bandit listened to her story, he sighed in disappointment that the flame with the power to grant wishes outside of the bottle had already died. But this doesn't make sense. If it truly granted my wish, then nobody should have been able to find me here. Maybe they shouldn't. The desert is difficult and dangerous to navigate. But I was determined to make it, no matter what. Then take this bottle with you for your trouble. It may be able to grant you your wish. Though sadly, only within the confines of the bottle itself. 
All I wish for is light. Honoring the bandit's request, the girl wished for light inside the bottle. And sure enough, it lit up. They found that while the light was only generated within, it could nonetheless shine through the glass and reach anywhere in the outside world. Even though it doesn't burn as brilliantly as the light that shone before, this is still an extraordinary light. What will you do after I take the bottle? I don't know. Well, then maybe you should come back with me. With no reason to refuse, the girl accompanied the dagger bandit back to the land where the light did not shine. They brought light to that place, and the darkness was dispersed, and they lived happily ever after. Director? Ha! Oh, no one's ever called me that before. Thank you, my dear little mage. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm so happy. Miss Dia said that she tailored it a little bit so it would fit me. But you were the one who designed and made it. You're amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. And it sounds like Adia did a great job too. It was nothing, really. Just one of those, oh no, whatever shall I wear to the ball moments. Something comes in handy at times like that. Sewing is an art in its own right. You're more talented than you give yourself credit for, Idea. Really? Oh, uh, I, I'm just gonna go for a second. Please, chat amongst yourselves. She gets embarrassed so easily. She really can't handle being in the spotlight. Idea's a sensitive person and doesn't have a whole lot of self-confidence. I hope all the excitement hasn't brought her to tears. Oh, I'm a little worried. Don't worry. I'll go make sure she's okay. I'll see you all later. So... What did you all think of the play? Any thoughts? Huh? Uh-oh. Time to get serious. Now, are you sure you want to hear what we really think? Oh, absolutely! I had the courage to ask, didn't I? So, don't mince your words. Go ahead. Speak your mind. I can take it. Okay. Hi, Mom will go first. So, the dialogue at the beginning was pretty good, but it ran out of steam as the story went on. Paimon could tell that you ran out of inspiration somewhere along the way. The characters were honestly a little bit ridiculous. Paimon didn't get what you were trying to do. The moment anyone started to show any kind of substance, suddenly the scene was over. Yes, all very good points, Paimon. I would add that in its attempt to pay tribute to the series A Thousand Nights, all semblance of a coherent was sacrificed. Plus, I do have to penalize you for the issues with the props. Miss Idea, what are you doing back here? Oh, you know, I return like the tide when people start discussing something important. Huh, especially when it has to do with criticizing my show. Mm-hmm, but there was one thing I liked about it. Just one, mind you. The story had a good ending. You think so? I thought I was letting him off lightly. Idea, could I borrow you for a moment? Oh, sure. Excuse me. 
Excuse me for a moment. Back to you, Paimon. Keep up the good criticism. Okay, in that case, Paimon did have one other complaint. Let's hear it. Taking criticism on the chin is all part of being a director. The ending was all wrong. The girl's motives were clear and simple the whole way through. It was kind of jarring when all she had to say was, I don't know. And doesn't anyone else find it weird how her whole community was on the run, but she was only looking out for herself the whole time? I'm fine. I'm not going to improve without feedback. I also learned a lot this time with the chance to be off stage. To be honest, it was a dream come true. What a great attitude. You don't seem upset at all by our comments. I wouldn't say I'm completely unaffected, but you're only speaking the truth. They're all very valid points. Still, now that Paimon thinks about it, you did finish the script in a bit of a rush. Maybe we are being a little too hard on you. <laughs> That's perfectly fine. Nothing is as important to me as my work on the stage. We all use our imaginations when we're kids, right? I used to play with dolls and my own cardboard cutouts by the light of an oil lamp. The shadows would come to life and dance on the walls. I never got tired of it. Fast forward to now, and in many ways, I'm still that same little kid. Lying on his bed, making sound effects. And I get the same joy from running a show now, as I did in my little bedroom theater. Of course, a director can accomplish nothing without a cast and crew. So on that note, I want you to all know that I am eternally grateful to each and every one of you. Hey, don't mention it! We had a blast! <laughs> okay, here, take this. Your component, as promised. It's the bottle from the show! The one that lit up when I blew into it! That's right! Can you guess the secret behind why it lights up? Um... Oh, maybe there's an invisible fairy inside that opens its eyes when you blow into it! Uh, uh, bingo! You guessed it! That should do the trick. Oh, wait, this needs tightening up a little. Hold on, this will only take a second. Hmm, this outfit's more fashionable than I imagined. Excuse me, everyone. Do you have a moment? Especially you, Zosimos. Idea wants to do a little something for you. She says it'll be a dream come true. A dream come true? Yes. She said that as useless as she is, she wants to do something for you as the first person to have heard of your dream of being a director. Her words, not mine. I have to disagree, though. I have never thought of Idea as a useless person. How is this suddenly about me? If everybody is ready, then I'd like to invite tonight's male lead to take the stage! Ta-da! Wow! Cool! Kaya's turned into the real Dagger Bandit! Um, how is me changing outfits supposed to make the director's day? It's just a prototype costume. Is he that easy to please? Don't be silly. If I know art director, nothing will make him happier than to see his ideas brought to life by the right actor. <laughs> well then, I'm happy to oblige. Who am I to argue with the star of the show? Sosimos drew up countless designs and made a few prototypes before landing on this one. It just needed some tailoring to fit properly, so I made a few stitches here and there. I hope the result isn't a disappointment. Oh, it's perfect. Idea, I... I'm... Oh, <laughs> I'm so touched. Thank you all. You've made me happier than I ever thought I could be.
How are you doing? Recovered? Oh, I'm good. <laughs> Thank you again, Idia. Oh, please, don't mention it. Well, now that we have the final component, it's time to say goodbye for now. Let's head to the core of the Valurian Mirage and get this place fixed up. Can I keep wearing my costume? Please do, by all means. Both of you can keep your costumes. It seems only fair. Yay! Kaya, keep wearing yours too. It looks amazing. <laughs> I agree with our mage. I'm sure it's not every day you get to play such an unforgettable character. Sure. I think I can be a bandit for a little longer. Bye-bye, Mr. Director. Take care, my dear friends. <laughs> <laughs>